Hello Pisces, welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. I believe that today's reading is going to be a confirmation for you. A confirmation and an encouragement. I think that you are aware of what I'm going to talk about. And maybe you just need you're giving by, by coming here, you're giving yourself a little extra boost. Ace of Fire. Right? The, the way opening. And this is through everything that you have been doing through all the revelations, uh, insights, self-exploration, devotion to your path, devotion to yourself, astrologically I think this has a lot to do with Saturn entering Pisces. Neptune's been there for a long time, since 2012, solidly. It's a long time. And sometimes when a sign's planet is in the space, it can become too much. You know, Neptune is wonderful. He's dreamy and imaginative and uh, you know, filled with magic, but he can also be delusion and confusion and fog. And when he is in Pisces, there can be, right, there can be a gorgeous, you know, flowering of things, but there can also be, um, you know, this feeling of being lost, right, lost in the woods. Uh, I have a North Node in Pisces, and I remember the period, there was a period when Neptune crossed back and forth over my North Node, and it was a period both of some insight, but also of a great deal of confusion and inability to see my way forward, inability to even kind of know what was going on. Um, so now that Saturn has entered that space, there is this energy of, um, solidity, right? Things that were, you know, just shifting constantly, nebulous, coming to rest. Uh, the availability of discipline. And Saturn doesn't, you know, he doesn't actually demand, you know, that you force your nose to the grindstone. That's kind of, you know, what we've turned him into in our minds. But he is a creator. And I think that he is more interesting and flexible than we normally see him. And especially in Pisces. You know, in Pisces, kind of what he wants, I think, is to, is to help you put all of this wonderful spiritual, metaphysical, magical energy and philosophy and vision into practical use. So that it's not just, you know, some nebulous thing that you do when you go into meditation or when you do your ritual. That he, right, that it's there in life, right? Mixed in with all of that Saturnian physical stuff. And the extra nice thing about Saturn is that you get to keep all of this. So he's gonna pass through Pisces. 
And then in 2026, he's going to leave it completely. I think he does do a little back and forth over the border. Um, but then he will he will enter Aries and actually meet Neptune right at zero Aries in February of 2026. But it's not like you lose that then. Right? You get to keep any any transit that you have, and especially with Saturn, you get to keep all of those insights and all of that energy if you want to. So you are now absolutely in the final moment of crossing into something completely different than you have experienced thus far in your life, right? You are moving out of this dark forest and there, right, the, the path ahead is clear. And it is a path that you have called into being. So we start here with the card, your major arcana card, the moon. You really being able to utilize all of your gifts. Right, without feeling you know, kind of unmoored. I mean, we do have the Six of Cups, or Six of Cups, I'm sorry, Six of Swords. And then I'm just seeing below that the first appearance of the Eight of Wands. Movement, rapid movement. And at the bottom of the deck, we have the Nine of Cups. This um, emotional mastery, wish fulfillment that has been with you all along, even if you couldn't see it. But now you, that you see it now. You see it and not just uh, for yourself, but for you and, and your group. This feels very personal. I mean, you may have a vision for the whole world that's in your mind. But I think here and now this is about the vision you have for yourself and uh, family or friends that are immediately around you. You can really see it, feel it now. And any um, self-imprisonment, any mental vacillation, any um, per mental perseveration, overthinking, analysis paralysis is just going to be blown away. And it may feel rather sudden. I mean, it may be that you kind of wake up one morning and just find your mind really clear and find that you can hold that. That previously maybe you had this clear idea, this nice positive expectation, but that it would slip away, that it would get, you know, kind of fogged up or, um, you know, subsumed by old patterns. That's no longer the case. And it will feel sudden, like a switch being flipped. And then right after the explosion, you ride out as yourself. This is your court card, the Knight of Cups. Confident, happy, feeling pleasure and anticipation at what is to come. Easy in your seat. Now, this is not in any way a, a predictive right event thing. I'm not here to predict what will happen for you. Specifically, right, we have the mystery. 
that's part of the fun. Right? It's like discovering, you know, maybe a path in your local park that you've never gone down. Or, you know, if you've ever been a, a tourist in another city and or even in your own city and finding some, you know, little passageway or little uh you know, store that you've never been in that's filled with interesting things. Right? This is the vision that you have of the future, not something to be frightened of, but something to explore. Below that is communication. And actually below that is the Lady of the Lake, kind of the Queen of Swords in this deck. And actually, I think um, also Saturn's showing up here. Um, absolute truth, courage, self-respect, responsibility. These are all sort of Saturn things. Strength. Saturn is strength. As well as stability. And then, of course, communication of all kinds with, um, with your people, with your fellowship in the non-physical. And at the bottom of this deck, we have the birth rebirth card. Happening, even if you couldn't see it fully. And I think that you did. I think that you, you know what you've been doing. Um, it's just that maybe there's been, there's still been some confusion, some, you know, moving back words occasionally getting perhaps lost in, in memories or, you know, old stuff, right? The burden and the goblin. And these are not, none of, none of this is wasted. Everything that you learned while burdened and with the goblin in your ear is of use to you. Use to you in your journey forward and, and with other people, right? This Knight of Cups is taking his cup to others, right? We have this Ten of Cups vision for a group of people rather than just yourself. So everything that you've learned, you can share with others. Um, it will let you feel greater compassion for others who may still be stuck in their patterns. You know that it, that it can take time, that it's something that really can't be forced. And of course, perception, yes. The change, how you see things, changes everything. And I think this is a lesson that we have to relearn over and over and over again until it really like clicks into place. Because we're so used to the kind of physical world cause and effect. And people telling us, you know, X, Y, or Z is bad for you. Well, maybe it depends, right, on how you perceive it. And you may have to relearn that, relearn, trust. But now it's, it is clicking into place. And it does feel as if it really feels like it's going to be a sudden thing between one day and the next. That one day you will still have some sort of confusion and then the next it will all be clear and you will feel this trust, this faith, both in yourself. Because you got yourself here. You absolutely got yourself here. You can trust yourself. You will see that. And that you can trust your fellowship. And then we have the world. 
with the Eight of Cups below. Right, leaving, leaving what needs to be left, stepping into the new. You know, and here, right, it's like this world is being revealed. She's, she's dropping the curtain um, that has been kind of, right, it's not a solid curtain, it's sort of, um, right, frosted, right, like tulle fabric or sheer silk that's been covering this, covering your ability to see what is really there. And now that fog is being removed. At the bottom of this deck, we have the second appearance of the Eight of Wands. Hidden speed, hidden energies that are poised to move. Poised to move at your signal. And maybe at this point, um, we are uh, we are in the halcyon days, the seven days before and after the winter solstice, meant to be a, a period of calm. And then, of course, uh, in the Western world, often that week between Christmas and New Year's is a very quiet week. I mean, there may be events happening, right, concerts or, or this sort of thing, but work tends to subside. There's a festive air. People are perhaps more relaxed during that week. I, I know some people who are taking the whole week off. So there is this, there is this space to kind of focus on, right, on physical things. Not in a, you know, I have all of these chores to do, but really kind of with this Empress energy following. Really maybe immersing yourself in kind of earthy, mundane, um, things. So, you know, really maybe enjoying cooking your meals. Or, you know, if you're somebody who does crafty things, maybe really engaging in that um, in a very deliberate way. Kind of really engaging with your physical life in a deliberate and sensual way. And then doing maybe some more dreaming. Right? I think that here, you know, the Four of Cups is often about ignoring the cup. But this card, because she is you know, in this meditative state, the moon there is waning. It will soon be a new moon. Then, right? The, when the new moon happens, the new thing will begin. So she's in this kind of dreaming phase. And we have a full moon happening on the day after Christmas. Now we won't quite reach the new moon for two weeks after that. Um, so there is, right, there's this extra space Because that, right, that eight of wands is poised and ready to move. So I think this is an invitation to really luxuriate in this period when things are still at peace, right? When things are still slow, right? To dream up, right, this 10 of pentacles vision. And maybe to engage in some of it. 
you know, to, to maybe make some really elaborate meals, perhaps if you don't normally do that. Or, um, you know, maybe a little learn some new craft or to expand your skills in some physical craft. To really engage with your physical life in a sensual way. Right? Because Saturn, actually, at the moment, is also still conjunct Eros. Uh, their exact conjunction was last month, I think, in early degrees of Pisces, and Eros is now passing by, but they are still in proximity to each other. Eros moves much faster. So to really right, enjoy the sensual aspects of physical life during this period. I mean, I think you should always enjoy them, but <laughs> this period is going to offer you really the time and space to do it. And possibly lots of other people, right? This is the Ten of Pentacles that usually includes other people. So maybe really enjoying time with your family when kids are off from school and Perhaps your partner is also off of work or seeing other family that you don't normally see. Like really enjoying that. That's actually a message that's kind of coming through in different readings to really enjoy this holiday period. To really revel in it, to have, um, you know, a merry holiday. Um, to engage in cheer and joy and fun in whatever way you enjoy. And so then, then there is, right, the what is to come a little bit. So, the goddess of fire. Um, the goddesses sit in the king position in this deck. So the, the furthest point of the fire element. And this particular, the, right, this is Baba Yaga. Her, her chicken leg propelled house is back here in the woods. So we have here really a witch of fire. And I say that because we also have the Witch of Water and the Witch of Earth. So magic. I mean, out of all the signs, I, mean, I, I often talk about magic and creation and um, all of these things, but it seems to come up the most in its kind of purest form in your readings, Pisces. Right? Your, your oracular gifts, your connection to source and to your wider self. Um, and with you, right, with being, right, Virgo being on the other side of you, the possibilities for manifestation and physical creation. And so the witches are here in all the different ways. Now under Baba Yaga we have the Ace of Water, our Grail Cup, right? your cup, your, uh, the source of you, the pouring out of your dreams and desires, knowing that your cup will never be empty if you allow source to refill it as the spring refills this little waterfall. And at the bottom of this deck, 
we have this seven of air, which for me is ritual connection to your fellowship, right? That somebody has created this um, this tool, I want to say, this magical item. So to, to practice, practice your magic in whatever form that takes, whether you do elaborate rituals or very simple things, to maintain that uh, magical view of the world at, right, throughout your whole day, whether you're making breakfast or um, cleaning the bathroom or taking the dog for a walk, whatever it is. So advice, Pisces, the five of staves, this particular, I'm really coming to see the five of wands, actually in all the decks, as a deeply creational energy. I mean, I kind of started with the, the five of wands in this shadowscapes deck which is a whole bunch of foxes. And it seemed right like that quantum realm. But now I'm beginning to see it everywhere. Every time the five of wands or five of fire has come up, I have been seeing it as creation rather than conflict, right, or anger. And the five of wands is, I believe, Saturn in Leo. Uh, in, in the traditional um, sort of a Chaldean Deccan way of looking at the minor arcana. So Saturn coming up again as the great builder Right, the master in the quantum realm bringing um, things into the physical. Right, the other planets, especially the inner planets, right, they're sort of inspirational, right? There's Mercury, what you think about, and your, your kind of mental state and beliefs, and then Venus, what you love, what you value, uh, what you want and desire. And then Mars, too, is desire and how you want to act in the world. What it is you want to do. And then Jupiter, the philosophy, the expansiveness, the, you know, what is your beliefs? And all of this is mixing, right, in this quantum space, this creational space. And then there's Saturn to bring it all together. And here, right, this collaborative, co-creational thing going on. So collaboration across the board um, with your fellowship and source, uh, with other people that you know. Uh, below that is the Three of Cups, right, group, energy, celebration, um, Reproachment, maybe with people that you've had trouble with. The bringing of peace, the bringing of compassion. At the bottom of the deck is the Prince of Swords. More speed. Be prepared. For what is coming for this energy that's going to rise. Oh, you know, I didn't even talk about this third appearance of the Eight of Fire. <laughs> I was all caught up in the witches. So the Eight of Fire, the Eight of Wands appearing for a third time. And here, right in a group, in the family unit. So you are not alone in any way, Pisces. But you are responsible for receiving this energy and working with it. For keeping your mind clear. 
So there you are, Prince of Cups, ready to go. Ride right through that tower. Whatever, uh, you know, this, right, this tower that has created clarity for you, right, this is sort of, so there's kind of a tower before and after. And they're, they're sort of different towers. This is your revelatory moment. This is that uh, sudden switch that enables you to move forward really clearly. And then this is the dismantling of other right of structures around you that will happen as you ride forth in this new way of yours. And just ride into it with your cup, with compassion, with love, with your desires, your visions, your hopes for yourself and for others. Ride in. And then the hermit comes out, I think, as, as representative for Virgo. Remember that Virgo is there across the way. That hermit energy is available. That personal sovereignty, keeping your own counsel, keeping your own beliefs. Knowing, right, knowing what your philosophy of life is, what are your values, and keeping connection to your fellowship, to source, and to your own star. And then we have this six of sacred circles. This, the symbol here is a potlatch tree, where those who have a lot bring things, and those who need can go to receive things. So be, right, be in balance around that. Giving and receiving with an open heart. Because I think that Right? There will be many things for you to receive in this new world, but there may also be things for you to give, right? to give of your cup, perhaps to give of your time or your effort for others. Because I think this is part of your vision, Pisces. I think you really are concerned with the good of others. You want everybody who is around you and maybe even beyond that, to experience this Ten of Cups. And you will have the ability and the resources uh, to share that with others. So Pisces, I hope that this has confirmed everything that you're like, yeah, I am totally in it. Or that if it hasn't, if, if if you're right, if this is just about to happen for you, um, I hope that this is encouraging. And I will see you, Pisces, on the flip side of the year, I think, probably. The next set of readings starts on the 26th. I do wish you a very merry holiday season and a happy new year. I will see you next time. So long, Pisces.